Today in lab, we studied a series of related concepts, grounding movement, diffusion, osmosis, and dialysis. And I'm basically going to summarize the different experiments we did in class and show you the results. If you want more detailed explanation of some of the concepts, I've got a couple other videos that go into that. But our first concept was Brownian movement. And Brownian movement is basically movement of small particles caused by random movement of molecules. All molecules in the entire universe that are above a particular temperature called absolute zero are in constant random movement. Absolute zero is minus 273 degrees Celsius. And there is no place on planet Earth that's that temperature. So all, all molecules on planet Earth are constantly randomly moving. Now, we can't physically see those molecules moving randomly, but we can see their effects. And it's the movement of small molecules caused by the movement of these, excuse me, the movement of small particles caused by the movement of these molecules is Brownian movement. And here I've got a bottle of lamplight, which is carbon and soapy water. And I've put it on a slide on the video monitor. And it's been stirred up, but, but look, see these small particles? See there, it's basic. you can see they're drifting with the water, but they're also vibrating and wiggling around randomly. It's kind of a jer random jerky movement. That is Brownian movement. The small particles of lamplight are being constantly bombarded by random movement of molecules. And it's not going in any one particular direction. That's why they appear to wiggle or vibrate as they get carried along in the current. So the fact that all molecules above, above absolute zero are constantly moving causes the rest of these concepts we're going to be talking about to occur. And the next concept we're going to be talking about is diffusion. So come over here. I'll show you our diffusion experiments. Now, diffusion is the movement of molecules from regions of higher molecular activity to regions of lower molecular activity. Now, there's different things that influence rates of diffusion. One of the things that influence rates of diffusion is viscosity. Things that are more viscous have lower rates of diffusion. Viscosity is just resistance to flow. For example, you buy motor oil with different grades or different viscosities. Higher viscosity motor oil flows more slowly, it's thicker. Lower viscosity motor oil is thinner and flows more easily. So things obviously are going to diffuse more quickly at lower viscosities. We've got some plates up here that demonstrate that. Okay, so I've got a plate of water, which is low viscosity, and a plate of agar, which is very high viscosity. Agar see it's a jelly, it doesn't flow. And I put a drop of red food coloring in each one. And you can see that in the water, all the red food coloring has been diffused throughout. And the agar is diffused only a very small amount. So the agar is too viscous for it to diffuse easily. The water is low viscosity, so it diffuses very easily and rapidly. Right. We'll take a look at some more things that influence rates of diffusion. Now, molecular weight can also influence rates of diffusion. Molecules that are heavier are going to diffuse more slowly than light molecules. And diffusion occurs with not only liquids like food coloring, but also gases. So we've got an experimental setup. Unfortunately, it's not really running, but I'll be able to explain what happens. I've got a glass tube here, and I've got a cotton swab with hydrochloric acid on it and a swab over here with the ammonium hydroxide on it. So basically, chlorine gas is going to diffuse off this cotton swab, this direction inside the tube, and um, and ammonium ion or, or ammonium gas is going to diffuse off this cotton swab in this direction. Now, the chlorine is a heavy molecule. so. The gas is going to travel slowly in this direction. The ammonium is a light molecule. The gas is going to travel quickly in this direction because they have different molecular weights. Now, this gas is moving slowly. This moves moving rapidly. So where they meet, they're going to meet closer to the chlorine end. And you're going to see a foggy portion of the tube somewhere about here because 
where these two chemicals meet, they form a precipitation. And the precipitation will be closer to chlorine because chlorine is a heavier molecule. We've got a nice photograph of the precipitation from blackboard for you. Now, we've got another experiment that shows that very same result. We've got two different chemicals here. We've got potassium permanganate, the purple chemical. We have potassium dichromate is the yellow chemical. So we've got permanganate and dichromate. And these two chemicals are of different molecular weights. Permanganate is a light chemical. Dichromate is a heavy chemical. So you can see the stain of the permanganate is larger because the permanganate is going to rapidly diffuse with the agar. The dichromate is going to diffuse with the agar only slowly. So let's take a look at our next experiment. Now that first plate that we finished looking at is potassium permanganate, potassium dichromate at a high molecular concentration. And substances at higher concentrations diffuse more quickly. Substances at lower concentrations diffuse more, diffuse more slowly. So that was 0.1 molar concentration. So that was the plate we just looked at. It's 0.1 molar concentration, pretty high concentration. We've got a plate here that's a very low concentration. This is a 0.0 one molar. So this is this plate is one tenth as concentrated this plate. So if you look at them both, you can see that the stain at a higher concentration, this one, is much bigger than the stain at the lower concentration here. So for both permanganate, permanganate and the dichromate, you can see at the lower concentration the stain is smaller because diffusion is much less. All right, now let's continue. The final experiment we did with diffusion illustrated the fact that substances at lower temperatures diffuse more slowly because the molecular activity is less. The molecules move more slowly. So we've got a plate of agar I'm going to take out of the fridge. So this is a plate of agar I took out of the fridge, the ones out on the counter. You, if you look and measure it, you can see that the cold plate is slightly has a slightly smaller stains on it than the hot plate. Because at cold temperatures, diffusion is less than at warm temperatures. Let's walk over and we're going to discuss osmosis through cell membranes. <laughs>